بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته A culture of shirk A culture of خرافات Superstitions What is a culture of shirk? What is a culture of kufr? Take for example religions that claim monotheism like Christianity, so-called Christianity in its various forms. The Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church that are known for extreme saint veneration for example. They all claim Tawheed yet they have a saint for every problem. I will never forget uh, after I left Shizim and uh, the beautiful Sunni community that embraced me, one of the brothers I became friend with was from Kazakhstan, an ethnic Russian from Kazakhstan, a beautiful brother, may Allah preserve him. He told us his story of how he became a Muslim and why he uh, like definitely never considered Shiism. But his story in short, one of the main things that convinced him of the falsehood of his church was when he told us that one day he went to his um, local Russian Orthodox church and he said that, you know how he, he told us how Catholic Orthodox Church is uh, quite, sometimes, I don't know, grim, statues everywhere. He said there were statues of various old men, so-called saints. Then the priest told him, if you lose something, you call upon Saint Holy Man A. If you want this, you call upon you call upon Saint Holy Man B, and so on and so forth. Of course, praying to Mary under the disguise and uh, excuse of intercession, tawassul, was all also common. Now, this is orthodoxy, and Catholicism. You have the same. And in many other sects and religions that claim Tawheed. And of course, in Imamism, in Shiism, you have probably seen, or I will inshallah link it, videos, clips from lectures from Shia scholars that have gone so far in their preaching of blatant, unexcusable forms and rituals of shirk that they have literally copied the shirk of the Nasara of the Catholics and the Orthodox especially in particular if you like because if uh, you know there's a, a, a there is a big split among the Christians most Protestants as far as I know they pretty much dislike uh, saint worship of course, they worship Jesus, Wali Abu Billah, but they, at the very least, reject praying to Mary and praying to saints, praying to any other than Jesus, who is God to them. Wali Abu Billah, Allahul Musta'an. But still closer to, they're definitely closer to the truth and to the scripture, whatever is left of the Bible, than the other sects. So the Rafa. The extremists, the Imamites, who attribute themselves to the Ahlul Bayt, seem to have a race in Shirk or Kufr with the other pagans, idol worshippers, when it comes to these rituals. So there is, it there's, there's videos, you can watch clips of lectures where the Shi'i Mu'ammam Turban had teaches in English and in Arabic, in Farsi, teaches his congregation to call upon 
Imam number one, if you need this. Imam number two, if you need that. Um, Musa al kadhim the seventh so-called Imam who's buried in Baghdad, rahimahullah. Who, by the way, we can make a whole, I can make whole lectures about this personality. Who never called to his Imam or you know, to no authentic source. Uh, injustice has been done to him for a shred of doubt by the authorities back then, just like to other giants of, of Ahl Sunnah. But that's another topic. Did you know that they won title of Musa al kadhim that the Rafida have given to him and give is Babul Hawaij. Bab mean door, right? Hawaij is the plural of Haja, need. So Babul Hawaij is the gateway, the door to your needs. Wallahi, if you go to a Hindu, Wallahi al Adrim. If you go to a Hindu and an atheist and say, well, who do you think is according to the Muslims the door, uh, the door to the to fulfilling your needs? They call him Babul Hawaij, Qadi al Hajat, the one who fulfills the needs. Allah, every Hindu or atheist, if he knows the ABCs of Islam or Muslims worship Allah alone, pray to Allah alone. Well, it's Allah, isn't it? The answer we would say to the Hindu or the atheist or the Christian, we would say as Muslims, it's only correct if you ask a Sunni. If you ask an orthodox Sunni Muslim. Yes, that's Allah, of course, and you're right. But did you know, Mr. Hindu? Did you know, Mr. Christian? Mr. Jesus worshiper? Did you know, Mr. Atheist, that there's a sect that claims Islam and Tawheed and following the Prophet's progeny? that has given these kind of titles to the creation. So Musa al kadhim the seventh so-called Imam, seventh infallible, who of course is not infallible. He was an Imam, Jalil, a great Imam from Ahl Sunnah. But he's very innocent of the Rafidah. But this is what they attribute to him. That's nothing. There is another personality who in specific has been giving this title. Qadiul, Qadiul Hajat. Babul Hawaij. And that is Abu Al-Fadl al Abu Al-Fadl al-Abbas. Or sometimes also called Abu Fadl. Abu Al-Fadl al-Abbas is the heroic, brave, warrior, and half-brother of Al Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib at the Battle of Karbala. A lot of exager exaggeration about him, and there's lectures on YouTube by the Sunni Defense, I think, where authentic narrations about the uh, incident of uh, Karbala uh, has have been shown, and, and the myths and fabrications, like him bringing water with no hands and all exaggerated, typical. Shia exaggerations have been debunked. But there's no doubt that he was a brave man. He was the half-brother of Imam al Hussein. His mother was Umm al banin And she had a son, as far as I know, I think his name was Uthman. And of course, there were other brave men at the Battle of Karbala. Like Ali's son, Uthman. And there were Abu Bakr there, and Umar there. Again, sons of Ali, and sons of Hussein, and sons of Hassan, that are barely... Or in fact, never mentioned. Never. At the very least, we can say, you won't see Rafida waving flags and calling upon, Ya Uthman ibn Ali. Madad, Madad, help me, help me. That's, that's, but that's an own, own topic for itself. The unknown martyrs of Karbala. The Umars, the Abu Bakrs, the Uthmans. Names that the Ahlul Bayt loved for whatever reason, but they loved them. You would barely see, barely see Rafada extremists mentioning these names. So, anyway, the Ghulu, the exaggeration, the Christian Catholic Orthodox Church style invocation of saints has been fully incorporated into Imamism. Shi'i Imamism, Twelvaism, under the disguise and the pretext 
of tawassul and wasila and whatnot. To the extent that they give their saints titles such as Qadi al Hajat, Babul Hawaj, Waliyadu Billah. Exactly like the church. Exactly like the church. Every Imam has a specific power ranger like Waliyadu Billah, uh, power and, and, and task waiting for the Shias to call, uh, waiting for the Shias uh, to be called upon. And the various accents and dialects and in Farsi and Qum and Kabul from and in 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 Iraq and everywhere. And this is one of many examples. One of many examples to prove that when I say a culture of shirk, this is not a baseless accusation. This is not demonizing any community. It is calling a a child by its name, a spade, a spade. This is what it is. I can give you more examples. As an Iranian myself, I was born in Iran. I was born in Iran. And grew up most of my life in the West. And visited Iran many times. Last time was 2003. I was still Shi'i in 2003 summer. In fact, I was very religious at that time. Now, did you know that in Iranian Shia culture, mainstream culture, and when I say mainstream, I don't mean that the practice that I'm going to mention is something, because people confuse these things. They, the Sunni thinks as a Sunni when he listens to these things. You have to sometime understand your mukhalif, your opponent, the way he thinks. You have to understand a Christian, a saint worshipper, a Jesus worshipper, a Mary worshipper, a Joseph worshipper, a saint XYZ worshipper. To him, all these things are normal. Bowing down, doing sujood, calling upon saint XYZ for this and that. You have to understand where he's coming from so look when I say mainstream this is fully endorsed and preached by the clergy of Qom and Najaf and elsewhere the culprits are the so-called Ayatollahs the so-called Ayatollahs they're the culprits they are the ones who have made shirk in the name of Ahlul Bayt, khurafat in the Ahlul Bayt mainstream. And I'll give you one example. I remember when I started practicing Shiism, because as I explained in some of these, you know, extremist rafada, picking one word from here and there, making, you know, two, three minutes, sometimes even one minute clips, huh? distorting words, nobody cares about them. I'm talking to those who are interested, who are open-minded. When I said that I come from a religious family, it is absolutely true. My family, Abbasis, from Shamiran, which is originally a town in the, in the northern outskirts of Tehran, are known as a very religious family. They had, they have even clo or they used to have close ties to Khomeini's family, and Khomeini used to have a house in Jamaran, which is also north of Tehran. So my father's family are very religious. And my mother's side, you can describe them as more secular Twelvers, just like you find, if you can call it that, secular so-called Sunnis. However, of course... <laughs> And this is no secret to anyone who knows Iranian society, Iranian people, and the state, the rotten state of Shiism within its fortress. Which is that many people, many Iranians have left Shiism. You know, Shias who always bo boast about, oh, we have converts here in Nigeria, and we have converts here in Egypt. You know, always in the most extreme Sufi regions where people already v worship graves and saints. Here and there they get some so-called converts, you know. 
So um, my father's family, they went obviously through a, uh, like many other religious family, into a, uh, they went through a, a, a phase when many of them left Shiism, which is very common in many religious families in Iran. As I always say, and this I learned from a very beautiful Iranian Sunni brother, Sheikh, the biggest enemy of Shiism, Imamism, and those who have harmed it the most before the shred of doubt, ironically, have been the Toban hats, Ohund, Mullah, one needs to wash his, brush his mouth after when saying these things, are the clergy of Qum. And Najaf and elsewhere. Nobody, no so called Dahabi, Wahhabi, no so called Sunni, Nasibi, has harmed Shiism more than them. By Allah. Nobody has made the image of Islam. Because the people of Iran, the vast majority who are Shia, per they perceive to them Shiism is Islam. In fact, it's the Islam of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nobody has harmed the image of Shiism, Ahlul Bayt, Islam altogether in Iran than those of the Tobans in there. There's no doubt about that. And many Shias, when they listen to this right now, even if they insult me, they know deep inside, and I talk to many of them, they know this is nothing but the truth. What I'm stating is nothing but the truth. Of course, the official policy is to blame everything on, 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 on Israel and on America and, and on the boogeyman, on the Nasibi man and the whatever man. And of course, that's our official policy. But the truth, everybody knows the truth. So, my family, when I said that they are religious, of course, many of them eventually, the vast majority of them, in fact, I would say, have either left Shizim or became themselves secular and have harbored a hatred for the clergy and the regime. This is very common in Iran. In fact, there's a saying in Iran, the only people who still hang to this regime are, are those who are literally eating from its hand, i.e. stooges, another type of nutters. So one last thing in this episode of the culture of shirk that I wanted to share with you is... That did you know that in Iran, in Iranian Shia culture, the fortress of Shiism, the salam is been given. It is still common that you say salamu alaikum. But it is very uncommon to use salamu alaikum, like many non Arabs also say, in Pakistan, non, they are non Arabs, Bangladeshis are non Arabs, Indonesian people are non Arabs. They say like a, like a proper Muslim, one of the common forms of goodbye is also to say Salaamu Alaikum, peace be upon you. Did you know that this is extremely unlikely in Iran? Very uncommon, sorry, very uncommon in Iran. Yes, there is Khuda Hafiz, which is Farsi, which means may God protect you. Nothing wrong with it and which... Uh, has been it, it, Farsi obviously has influenced a lot of um, modern day Asian countries and they use it as, in Pakistan in Urdu Khuda Hafiz is used but another very common way of uh, departing from each other is to say Ya Ali Madad or Ali Yarit Ya Ali Madad Yani Oh Ali, help. And Ali Yarit, khalas. Yani Ali Yarit, Yar means companion. A Yar is a companion in Farsi. That's why in Urdu when they say Haq Char Yar, you know, the four Yars, the Khulafar Rashidin, the four. So Ali Yarit, Ali, 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 your companion. Ali, Ali, be with you, protect you. It's mainstream. Everybody knows this in Iran. So this is the culture of Tawheed? Is this Tawheed? Is this the madhab of Ahlul Bayt? Is this what Jafar al-Sadiq used to say? 
Is this what Imam Al-Baqir used to say? Imam Zain Al-Abideen used to say? Al-Kathim, Wal-Ridha, Wal-Hadi, and so on used to say? Ali bin Abi Talib used to say? This is what they want to... This is... This is what they want to do to your societies. Now, if somebody says, you just admit it, they also say, Khuda Hafiz. Khuda Hafiz means, may God protect you. Ya Rajul. Oh, my friend, my brother, my sister. What is the definition of shirk? Isn't it anything but mixing truth, i.e. tawheed, monotheism with falsehood, i.e. shirk, polytheism? Of course, in a shirky society, in a society where polytheism is rampant, people will here and there also mention Allah. In Farsi, you say Khuda Shukr in Iran. It's also mainstream. Khuda Shukr. Khuda Allah. Allah Shukr. Yani Allah Ashkur. I thank you, Allah. Yes. And they say Alhamdulillah. Yes. And they say Khuda Hafiz. Yes. But in the same breath, they say hundred Ya Ali's. Hundred Ali Yarid. And you know, in Arabic, in Islam, in, in, this, in the culture of the Muslims in the world, even those who are affected by a lot of superstitions, and no Muslim country is innocent, but if you go to the worst affected Sunni country in the world, when it comes to grave worship, veneration, khurafat, superstitions, shirkiyat, the worst affected. Will you ever find a Sunni region where people say, Umar Yarit, Umar is your aid, Umar be with you, A'udhu Billah, Abu Bakr Yarit, Ali Yarit, Ali be with you, Ali be your guide, Ali be your protector, Uthman Yarit, Umar be your protector, Uthman be your protector, be your guard, and so on, be your guide, never ever, because the culture of Tawheed, Sunnism is by default a culture of Tawheed, it is a culture of Tawheed, which of course, in certain regions, has been affected by superstitions, and in some extreme regions, has also mixed truth with falsehood, shirki rituals, under the name of Tawassal al -Mudna. But to that extreme, drawing picture of the saints, hanging them up in the centers, innovating new places of worship, Husayniyat, imagine Sunnis innovating the place of worship, Umariyat and Bakriyat and Uthmaniyat and, and lamenting and self-beating themselves on the martyrdom of Uthman and Omar ritually, annually, every year. In the name of love and remembering the great people. No, you won't find such things. You won't, you won't find, oh, Omar be your protector. But this is how far superstitions have gone. Shirk has been spread in a society. That when you depart from someone in a country like Iran, which is the fortress of Shiism, people say to you, Yo Ali. Ali Yared, Yo Ali Madat. That's a common form of departing from one another. Also, it's a common form, of course, of greeting. You can also say that, Yo Ali. And then, you know, I could go endless, endless. I can provide you with, provide you with clips in Arabic and in Farsi, how the scholars utter the worst forms of disrespect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in shirk. And when they... When they say that for heavy things, you say, Ya Ali. And for light things, you say, Ya Allah, when you lift light, light things. And how when they get up and sit down and breathe and the mothers give birth, they proudly say, we call upon Ali, we call upon Ali. Just replace that with Jesus huh? and shave that guy and make him look like a Catholic priest. Same thing. Same thing. Just one is called John. The other one is called, is, is called Hussein. The person who invokes. Yeah, John invokes, that Hussein invokes. So these are just few examples, few of my thoughts. And inshallah more in the future. And inshallah this makes people think and appreciate and understand what the danger is when extreme forms of literally polytheistic and pagan sects 
rituals of these sects, if they were to spread and come to your region and country, this is what you're going to get. <laughs> All the farce, the lie about, oh, Mithab Ahlil Bayt, following Ahlil Bayt. This is behind the mask. These ridiculous shubuhat, uh, ridiculous khurafat superstitions, and zandaqat, heresies, shirkiyat, kufriyat, dalalat, misguidance in the name of Ahlul Bayt. This is how your society is going to end up. They think that we will allow this. They think one day Medina, Medina Til Munawwara, Mecca Til Mukarrama, the lands of the Muslims, the lands of Tarheed, going to end up where people in the Majusi accent will say, Yo Ali, when they say goodbye. Yo Ali, you're it. Ali, you're it. May Ali be your guide, your protector. This is what they want to replace. And as I said, it's mainstream, as in not practiced by Jahils. Practice, of course, they're also jahil, they're, they're so called ulama, umala, one should say, mainstream as in it has been taught and planted by no one else than the clergy, these so called ayatollahs, turban heads of Qum and elsewhere. They are the culprits, they are one, the ones who, on a daily basis, teach these khurafat, these shirkiyat. And the layman have picked it up and it has become so common, so common on the tongue of a person in Iran. That one last thing let me share with you. Did you know that in Iranian culture, when someone is in absolute fear or shock, even the most hardcore atheist and Islam-hating Iranian, it happens to him. I've seen it. I've seen it on YouTube. I've seen YouTubers, Iranians, with nothing to do with Islam and Shiism. Do you know what it is? What comes on their tongue? The first thing? Yo Abul Fazl. Yo Abul Fazl. Hmm? Back to Abul Fazl Abbas. Not, not, he, he, Abul Fazl is not even one of the 12 Imams. Yani worse than the Mushrikeen of the Quraysh. I don't need to cite you all the verses. You know the verses. Who is worse than those who Allah mentions in the Quran that when calamity fall upon them, i.e. when they were in the real worst situation to them, they abandoned all those who they invoked besides Allah and invoked Allah alone. This is known. This is known to all the Muslims, Muwahidun, monotheists. Yet look at their society. Look at the culture of shirk, that the first thing on their tongue, when calamity, when bad things huh, happen to them, Yo Abul Fazl, Abul Fazl, Yo Abul Fazl, Yo Bahdi, Yo Ali. This is a culture of shirk. This is the reality of the culture. You can go around and throw around accusations and we want to reply to that. Oh, Wahhabi, Salafis, Anthropomorphists, Zeus, God, this, that. Tayyip, where is the idol of the Wahhabis? Huh? Where is it? Where is the temple of the Wahhabis? Where is the Umariyat, Bakriyat? Where have the Wahhabis, Salafis, so-called? There's no such a thing, of course. Where have the Ahl Sunnah innovated shirki rituals of invoking other than Allah, invoking other than Allah in sujood, in innovating places of worship in the, besides the masjid. Allah has mentioned the masjid, the institute, if you like, of the masjid in the Quran many times. These people have innovated the Husayniya. Where has Ahl Sunnah fallen any of these kufriyat? Nowhere. Because Ahl Sunnah are truly Muwahidun, truly monotheist. And these people are truly Mushrikun. And when I say these people, I mean they're ex extremists. Because in all fairness, there is many Shias. And even many Imamites who are not aware of the full reality of the matter. By Allah, brothers. I know I myself are very impulsive and passionate. You know, and some might think that I lash completely out against every one of them. No, I'm not like that. People don't know me. Wallahi, they got me wrong. As for my enemies, who cares? Well, I don't tell the last people I care about. 
I care about my own brothers. Trust me. As for the scholars, la shaka wa la raib, they are kuffar. La shaka wa la raib, they are the culprit. La shaka wa la, uh, wa la raib, that they uh, uh, are culprit number one, and they, and they preach these khurafat and zandaqat, these heresies and the kufriyat, all these forms of disbelief and polytheism. But many of the awam, of the mainstream Shias, of the commoners, the followers, they don't know. And when they hear these things, and when they see these refutation, refutations, believe me, just like the arrow, when I was, in, after, in, after summer 2003, just like the arrow of da'wah hit my heart, but it wasn't overnight, I didn't woke up and say, oh, alhamdulillah, now no, listen to me. It was a struggle, I thought, I researched, and I read, but the arrow hits my heart. And these arrows of tawheed and the refutation of their ridiculous and superstitious sect, this Imamite 12 sect, these arrows that we shoot, these intellectual arrows, arrows of Dalil, real hujjahs, huh? they have already hit the target of many. They have already hit many hearts in a good way. And eventually those of them who have good in the heart, inshallah, and Allah wants for them if they have good in the heart. Allah will guide them to the truth. Wa akhirud da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammadin wa alayhi wa sahbihi ajma'in.